Hi, and welcome to the Epithelial Tissues Lab Part 1. Here, some of the covering epithelial tissues will be highlighted and we'll approach these tissues from macroscopic to microscopic levels. At the lowest possible magnification, what we see are these non-staining areas on the outside. So that's one environment and then the organ. So there might be some lining epithelia around the boundary of this tissue. So that's what we're expecting to see as we zoom in. And even within this tissue or organ, there's so many non-staining areas all over. So this tells us that this might be an organ that has the external environment or lots of tubules that are part of the functional components of this organ or tissue. We also see these larger circles, each of which we should expect to see some lining epithelia in there as well. So let's start to zoom in and confirm some things. Yeah, the definitely these circular structures are not staining, so they're all probably external environments. And as we start to zoom in higher and higher magnification level, we are able to appreciate that each one of these kind of circular structures are lined by simple squamous epithelium. There's kind of occasional rounded cells here and there, but they're very rare. The reason why we are not seeing really distinctive simple squamous epithelia and the flattened nuclei at a consistent basis has to do with the three-dimensional nature of each one of these kind of circular structures. These are three-dimensional spheres with these flattened cells that are all over lining that sphere. So when we make a single cross-section, we're lucky to catch one or couple of nuclei in that single cut plane. So that's what we're looking at. On this side, there should be another layer of simple squamous epithelium. We haven't really cut any nuclei. There might be one only, and the rest are really thin cytoplasm of that simple squamous epithelium. What we see in between the two kind of lining epithelia is this sliver of connective tissue that's super duper thin. And within it, we see some nuclei that belong to the connective tissue cells. There's a little more connective tissue here. And also there are some blood vessels, super small capillaries that are lined by the endothelial cells themselves. So this is where the gas exchange would occur between the lining epithelium and the vasculature in this thin sliver of connective tissue. So where in our body would we have so many of these spaces all lined with simple squamous epithelia with really thin connective tissue in between for gas exchange? This is the lung tissue. This is our lung. And that's what a healthy lung should look like is like almost negligible amount of connective tissue between the two lining epithelia where the gas exchange would occur. So typically we shouldn't see so much cytoplasm or connective tissue in between the air spaces because that would actually indicate a pathological condition. Not good. All right, looking down here, Let's look at this area because these two look very similar. And as we zoom in, let's see what we're dealing with here. It looks like there are some blood cells here. Red blood cells all kind of congealed together. And as we zoom in to look at the lining epithelium, what we see is a single, simple, squamous epithelial lining. We've cut some flattened nuclei here, going all the way around, and those sing simple squamous epithelium is sitting on top of a really thin connective tissue or the basement membrane, outside of which we have these cross sections of the smooth muscle cells and their nuclei. So this is probably one of the arteries that traveled through the lung tissue to carry blood. So that's what we're looking at. So the lining epithelium here is the endothelium. And then this might be an area where 
the bigger blood vessel is branching out into a smaller artery. And then over here, we have another opening. It doesn't quite look like these two, these two, which are the blood vessels. Here, the lining epithelium is a little more substantial. And trying to find the area that is perpendicularly cut, I think, is this region. So let's kind of start to zoom in there. This is definitely not lined by simple squamous epithelium. It's lined with, I think the best guess here is the pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And I think there are some cilia there, but it looks like this tissue has some artifacts where the luminal lining has been dried out a little bit. So the cilia seem to be all kind of congealed together with kind of mucosal fluid. So the cilia is not quite as apparent. But given that this is the lung tissue and that this is most likely a bigger air duct that is carrying air down into the gas exchange surface, I would expect to see cilia there. So I'm just making an educated guess, as we all should. So that's the lung tissue. We're expecting to see some bigger air ducts that are lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelia, lots of blood vessels, and lots of air spaces that are lined by simple squamous epithelium for gas exchange. And when we go to the outside of the, the organ itself, we should expect to see, since this is a visceral organ, this tissue is a visceral organ, we should expect to see mesothelial lining covering the outside of this organ. And, you know, it's not quite as apparent. It looks like there's a lot of kind of connective tissue that is smearing out, if you will. And only kind of around this area do we see the nuclei of flattened cells forming that mesothelium. And that's an okay finding because mesothelium is such a delicate tissue. When you handle such a delicate tissue outside of the body and just smear the outside of the lung and then fix it, most likely that delicate tissue will be denuded. So that's probably why we're not seeing such a definitive mesothelium out here. I think within the outside kind of capsule of the lung, we're seeing yet another arterial uh, longitudinal cut with blood cells in it, and then lovely endothelium with one layer of smooth muscles that's kind of wrapping around that tiny arteriole. So we saw mesothelium, endothelium, and simple squamous epithelial tissue lining the ga gas exchange surface. In fact, kind of sandwiching a really thin connective tissue in between the two simple squamous epithelia to facilitate that gas exchange rate. So that is our lung tissue. At a first glance of this low mag image, immediately what I see are these open spaces or non-staining areas that is potentially a lumen or an opening that's lined by an epithelial tissue or should be lined by an epithelial tissue. Right next door, there's another lumen, but this time it looks like there's something in there. And but still, there should be an epithelial lining there. And then here also some stuff in the middle, but external environment most likely or lumen lined by an epithelium. So I see that pattern all over around this area. It looks like the lumen is kind of in a spirally course here also. And then this one seems to be kind of curving up. This one, this one also. There are some lumen that is potentially cut perpendicularly. So we see a circular pattern of some of these lumens. So what that suggests to me overall is that this is an organ that's made up of long tubules that's kind of all coiled upon itself, all compacted in this region. So that's my guess. And then we'll start to zoom in and see what kind of epithelia we're, deal we're dealing with here. Let's focus our attention to this region where it looks like potentially the lumen or the tube is kind of cut in 
a perpendicular plane. And this is an artifact, by the way. So if your eyes kind of went there, that's natural. But, you know, we can start to kind of ignore some artifacts that, that are that obvious. All right. So at this level, definitely there's a lumen there. There's a bunch of kind of gritty stuff that's in the middle of this duct or a lumen. And then outside, I would say this is the basement membrane. And in between the basement membrane and the lumen or the this external quote-unquote environment, we have our lining epithelium. And right off the bat, off the apical surface, I see these kind of really wispy, really long cellular projections that are coming out here also on this cross cut. So that tells me that there's some apical specialization there. I'm comfortable ruling out microvilli at this time because these are just too long. And I might even rule out cilia because cilia should be a little shorter and they should be a lot more uniform in shape. So what's another, what is remaining of the apical surface specialization is the stereocilia. So these are stereocilia. And looking at the epithelial tissue itself, I'm seeing nuclei that are kind of all over the place. They're staggered all over the thickness of the epithelial tissue. And I can't really trace the levels or rows of nuclei as I would be able to in a stratified type of epithelium. So this is more typical of a pseudostratified columnar epithelium that is non-ciliated type. These are stereocilia, not the true cilia. And then again, we can see the, the stereocilia details a little better. We can even zoom in one more time to confirm. These are really long projections. Some are branchy, like that. And then as for what is going on here in the middle of this lumen, I see some cellular debris. I see nuclei, really darkly staining nuclei that are kind of oval in shape. These are the spermatozoa or the sperm cells that are in the process of maturing in this organ. So this organ is the epididymis, which is an organ that is made up of really long tube of pseudostratified columnar epithelium that's coiled upon itself and it stores spermatozoa and helps them to mature and absorbs any dying spermatozoa in this, in this region. So that's epididymis. From the low mag observation, we can see that this is an organ with a big space or lumen that is in the, in the middle. And it looks like this lumen is actually kind of collapsed because we're seeing this fairly thick looking lining epithelium that has been kind of folded or collapsed upon itself, thrown into many of these folds. So let's start to zoom in and see what kind of lining epithelium we're dealing with here. At this level of magnification, we can definitely make out the basement membrane here. And we can see that the epithelium is comprised of many layers of cells. And another thing that we note is that there are no lining epithelial extensions that are growing into the underlying connective tissue. So there are no exocrine glands in this tissue. Let's classify this lining epithelium. And in order to do so, let's go and look at the morphology of the lining epithelial cells. For the most part, it looks like the lining epithelial cells at the apical most compartments are cuboidal in shape. And many of these cells have these dome-shaped extensions that are kind of ballooning out into the luminal compartment. Down here, though, we have a cell or two that are fairly flat, almost squamous in shape. Down here, many of these cells are once again mostly cuboidal, but then here we have some flattening cells or low cuboidal cells. And then here we have a cell that seems to be binucleate. At highest magnification, we can definitely confirm that this is a cell with two nuclei there. And many other cells 
that are cuboidal and their apical extensions ballooning out into the luminal compartment. These cells are dome cells or the umbrella cells that are associated with transitional epithelium. So given the many layers of cells comprising this tissue and the fact that the apical most compartment cells are kind of varied in shape, I'm comfortable making the call that this is the transitional epithelium. And in reality, this is the ureter, which is a cylindrical organ that carries urine from the kidneys down to the urinary bladder. So it makes sense that the lining epithelium of this organ is made up of the transitional epithelium. And at present, the lumen is kind of collapsed but it has the ability and capacity to kind of open up and for this lining epithelium to perhaps flatten out a bit, reducing the number of layers of cells, as well as the shape of the apical most cells kind of changing into more low cuboidal to squamous in their morphology. All right, so that was a good pattern recognition practice at looking at some covering epithelia. In the next part of the lab series, we'll get some additional covering as well as glandular epithelia. Thank you for watching this sample video from our histology video course. You can access the entire video course along with the histology lab videos, practice questions, and outline format ebook on our website, dviacademy.com, which is linked in the description below.